Uncle Roger haven't reviewed Jamie Oliver for a long time now. Wonder how my old friend doing. You're gonna absolutely love this recipe. Right off the bat, here we go. Some famous last words from Jamie. This is a modern day fast food classic, Pad Thai. Deliciously healthy. Oh, why Pad Thai like that? Packed with Why so much vegetable? You sure this Pad Thai? Chili egg. Oh no. The words Jamie Oliver, Wedgie and Pad Thai those words don't go together. Uncle Roger think this video is gonna give me heart attack. I need my good morning towel for me to scream into. Huh? Uncle Roger is a security blanket. I think he's gonna need it. Maybe I should have one too. So I've kind of evolved this recipe and had some fun with no, it. No, 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 no. Jamie, don't evolve. Don't have some fun with anything. Those words coming out your mouth, that's scaring all Asian people all over the world. Evolve and have some fun with it. This kind of sounds like it's turning into a science experiment. <laughs> Chili sauce. Chili sauce, wrong. Soy sauce. Soy sauce, wrong. Now tamarind. Tamarind, okay, tamarind correct. Sauce for Pad Thai is just tamarind, palm sugar and fish sauce. That it. If you really want to make it vegetarian, do you know niece and nephew, they make vegetarian fish sauce also? Yeah? But Uncle Roger don't recommend that. Just eat the real thing, vegan people. Life too short. Just use real fish sauce. Fish almost vegan anyway. Because fish got no leg, got no feeling. Can't make sound. It almost plant. Oh, true, fish are not the same as octopus, and fish are a good source of a lot of vitamins, minerals, and protein. Funny though about octopus, some octopus actually have a higher IQ than some humans. And if you don't believe me, check it out. It's from a bean that's sweet and sour. It's a really important flavour in Asian cooking. And then a little sesame oil. Sesame oil wrong. Tofu. It's made tofu. of soya bean. Tofu. Tofu for Pad Thai, okay. But I need to be square fried tofu. Hopefully he do that. Ooh, you know when your spider senses or your intuition starts telling you like, uh, this is going to be a repeat of the fried rice video? It actually is going to be a repeat because if you take a close look at this still photo here, He's using silken tofu, and we saw last time what he did with it. Oh, Jamie, please don't smash the tofu this time. It's not nice. It's made out of soybeans, and it's a great source of protein. To get your veggie pad garlic good, going, bash up two cloves of just chopped garlic, chop garlic enough. Mortar. No need pestle mortar. Nice. And pureed, and then I'm going to use silken tofu. Silken tofu wrong. Put in dishes in cubes, slices. What we're going to do is use it as a foundation of the sauce. Tofu for sauce? Five grams. The tofu is going the same way as the miso in Jamie's ramen. He's going to kill it. I think Jamie's baiting Uncle Roger. This is probably the same as taking some spaghetti and breaking it in front of Italians. No! It doesn't go over very well. Wait, what, what, what? No, 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 no! What Uncle Roger just watch? Silken tofu is awesome. He put tofu in pesto and mortar. Uh, I have to admit, I haven't worked in an Asian kitchen before, so I can't say this for 100% certainty, but I have never seen tofu turned into a sauce before. Never. And that's after working in a French kitchen, and I'll tell you, the French are known for their sauces. There's like a million different types of sauces with everything. There's so many different variations. But the tofu, I have to admit, that is like, that's taking it maybe in a bad direction. <laughs> a step a little too far. Who cooked tofu like this? Jamie, in his egg fried rice, he crushed tofu with hand. But this time, that's not even enough. He have to crush tofu in pesto <laughs> and mortar. He's just destroying tofu. Jamie Oliver really is the ISIS of Asian food. Silken tofu is ultra smooth. Oh. It'll give you a sauce so silky, it'll cling to your noodles. Stick to the noodles? Peanut butter will also stick to the noodles if you really want to be technical about it. I mean, a lot of things will stick to the noodles. Molasses will stick to the noodles. Then any sauce fiber. will cling to noodles. That how sauce work, that how any liquid work, it cling to shit. A little correction about that. A runnier sauce, more watery, more liquidy, will have a harder time sticking to the noodles and coating it, or at least sticking to it. 
than a thicker sauce. Or in other words, it'll still lightly coat it, but it won't be as thick. Oh, so silky. I'm going to defeat it now. Then get building flavor. A tablespoon of The whole sauce. thing's going to look like nice warm it. or two of sweet chili sauce. <laughs> then the tamarind. You want a nice tablespoon of this paste. Tamarind's a key ingredient in Worcestershire sauce. Jamie is right about this. It is one of the ingredients, but so are anchovies and vinegar, which are also very important ingredients to make the impairments. And I'm gonna put a little teaspoon of sesame oil in there as well. Oh, sesame oil and wrong also. Half a juicy lime, lime also that wrong. Thing. Lime in pad thai, you just squeeze on before you eat. Not in sauce. Sauce gonna go in wok. You cook lime in high heat, it's gonna lose flavor. Wow, this is looking like a lot different than even the version that Ramsey made for the Thai chef. If you haven't seen that, you guys need to see that clip. Well, uh, uh, how is it? Hmm? Oh no, look at that face. This is not Pad Thai at all. This is not Pad Thai. Half a juicy lime, and that, my friends, is your sauce. Ugh, look at that. That sauce looks like shit you eat on Fear Factor. <laughs> For the all-important noodles, grab yourself a packet. So these are rice noodles. Rice noodle, so correct. Go with 150 grams. Mm, no, 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 no. You don't want to put in boiling water. You're going to overcook noodle. Rice noodle put in room temperature water. Pan, and you leave those for about seven, eight minutes. But check the pack. They're all different. When... <sighs> yes, pack tell you how long to cook it for. But remember, Pad Thai, the noodle still going to get cooked in wok. So don't finish cooking noodle in water. You need noodle to be a bit undercooked, then finish cooking in water. You see that noodle, Jamie noodle, I guarantee it overcooked. Uncle Roger's not going to say anything about the sieve, or the colander, as he calls it. This recipe must be really bad for him not to say anything about that. Like, really bad. Run them under cold water. That stops the cooking process. See? See? It already overcooked. Yes. You leave those for about seven, eight minutes, but check the pack. Jamie, this Asian noodle, not pasta. Yeah. Don't just follow instruction on box. Niece and nephew, you can't trust instruction on Asian noodle packaging. Anyway, it all wrong. You have to cook with feeling. Uncle Roger is right about this. It is more important to use feeling. And the suggestions about cooking times on the packets, even for like pasta, like Italian spaghetti and pasta and all this, is more of a suggestion. I mean, I don't even read the packet. I never do. I never pay attention to it. I just cook it. I taste the pasta. I don't go too far and I don't get on the computer and do some other things at the same time. I'm still in the kitchen and I just check it. And once it's like, you know, al dente, it's done. And then just add a little sesame oil to stop them sticking. Sesame oil again? No, to stop them from sticking. Don't overcook it. Simple. The thing is with rice noodles, as soon as you take them out of the water, they will stick to each other like a you know what. I mean, seriously, they will stick to each other like Velcro or even like duct tape. I mean, it's really hard to break them apart. So you have a few options. You can either add oil to them so they don't stick to each other and clump up, or you can add them immediately to whatever you're cooking and with the sauce and the other ingredients, it will coat the noodles. And the noodles will continue to cook once you do this. So again, like Uncle Roger said, you don't have to overcook them. You don't want to, because otherwise you end up with puree. Lightly toast and bash up 20 grams okay. of salted peanuts. Peanut, good. Give a glorious crunch to the veg. Pad Thai is that kind of brilliant mix of veggies, but then you get things like salad and herbs that are raw and cold and fresh. So there's that kind of jarring of hot and cold, crunchy and soft. It's just a brilliant thing. You know that feeling when you have like deja vu? Well, I'm having a little bit of deja vu right now because I'm having flashbacks of what happened in the, uh, <laughs> in the mac and cheese video with Jamie. One of the things I like to do which is my own personal problem, is to take a vulnerable, empty gem lettuce leaf and then load it with mac and cheese. And I actually do this at home, and my kids are around the table, and they're just looking at me going, you are such an idiot, you are like... Pad Thai, no jarring of hot and cold, it's just noodle dish, keep it simple, Jamie Olive Oil. I've got some broccoli, some asparagus, Wrong. baby corn, Wrong. pak choy, the outer leaves... Oh, pak choy. Classic mistake. Oh, how to make this dish more Asian? I know, let's put this Chinese something vegetable in there, pak choy. Woo! Yeah! yeah. <laughs> Cut the core of the pak choy in half and the baby corn. 
keep the asparagus tips, and finally slice the stalks. You know, I do have to admit, this is one of those recipes that it would be a heck of a lot easier if you were using a wok. I mean, you don't even have to buy a big one. You can get them on Amazon. Just a small wok, just so you can toss everything together, or at least a deeper pot. Because, I mean, honestly, in a shallow saute pan or in a frying pan, it's going to be a little, you know, mm. Some bean sprouts here, which okay, bean sprout again. only oh, correct vegetable. And I just want to kind of click them off. This stuff can change up what's available in the supermarkets, the markets, your budget. That's what's cool about this. Now, pad thai is actually a relatively new dish. It was created after the creation of or the unification of Thailand. So it's a relatively new dish. If you were to remove the sugar from it or maybe add some, a very little amount, it's not that bad of a recipe. It's actually pretty healthy in comparison to more processed foods or Burger King or McDonald's. I mean, it's still pretty healthy. Finely slice a shallot. Shallot, correct, okay. Start to dry fry all the veggies. Wait, what, what, what? dry, what the Back hell? And char and give you some Is he, is he finally shallow with no oil at all? Oh, Uncle Roger, so upset. It's not just laid down from chair. My whole body is laid down from chair. Pad Thai ni oi, Jamie. Hiya. That pan, that pan just comes straight from factory. It dry as hell and he whack shallot in there. No oil, no lube, just nothing. Walao it. He just raw dogging shallot into pan. Hiya. Well, you know what? I do have to admit, Jamie is not using olive oil. And this is like the first time that we've ever seen it too because there's no olive oil. He's not using anything. This is progress. I think Jamie's been taking Uncle Roger's advice. Ah, he's a secret admirer, maybe. Hmm. Mr. Nephew, use oil. It make everything cook better. Dry frying is like dry humping. Nobody want that shit. Smokiness, so we're gaining flavor. If you dry fry asparagus, no. you get nuttiness. What happened to your sesame in. oil you were using corn, so much corn. earlier? At least put some sesame oil in there better than Move this. I'll go in with some of these bean sprouts, some of our noodles. I have to say, with that Thai chef that didn't like Gordon's Pad Thai, if he tried this, whoa. <laughs> I would love to see the reaction from him. Hmm? He'd probably throw the plate at him. I'm not joking. Get yourself a little water. The, the water gonna overcook noodle even more higher. The noodle gonna be soggier than baby food. What are you doing, Jamie? Kind of goes a little bit crazy now. But this is exciting, right? It's not exciting. It's heartbreaking. And a nice wedge of this. Oh, uh, diarrhea mm. sauce. Tossing it no. around. Well, to be honest, if you take a look at that sauce that he made, the brown sauce, it kind of looks like a crunchy peanut butter, doesn't it? I mean, look at it. It looks like crunchy peanut butter. This is the fast bit, so you've got to concentrate a bit more, but it's not hard, it's not hard, it's exciting. Uh, so in we go. It, uh, no, 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 no. Metal spoon in non-stick pan, usually that biggest scene in Asian kitchen. But this video is so terrible that metal spoon in non-stick pan, that's the smallest mistake. Crushed nuts, lettuce leaves, get in some coriander, mint and basil, coriander, and wedges mint of lime. And basil. Only herb in Pad Thai is garlic chive. Coriander, mint and basil. Like, what it gonna taste like? It's just too many things, Jamie. Too many things. He has some strange flavors, but it's not just the flavors going on here. It's the texture of the silken tofu as the sauce. And then we want a little dry fried egg. So wipe out your pan. Dry fry again. And of course you need a non-stick pan for this. Oh, I love that bit. Yeah. If you're gonna do it, be sure that it's a non-stick. You know what, actually, if you don't have a non-stick, give it a try. Hmm? Because I guarantee you, unless you're using some sort of fat, it will stick like a you-know-what to your frying pan. Sprinkle with salt and chili flakes, and when it's crispy, flip it over and give it just 30 seconds. <sighs> Look at that, yeah. The pan's so new, it comes straight from factory. Uncle Roger's right about that. That pan looks brand new, like it hasn't been used before. Because I actually have the exact same nonstick pan in my house and it's about a year and a half, two years old right now and I haven't been using it a lot. It's just for making like Spanish omelets and tortillas. But I've made enough that now the bloody eggs stick to it in some spots. So I have to be a little careful. I have to add extra oil to it. And then the last little kiss is of soy sauce. Soy sauce wrong. So that my friends 
What? Why was the post sticking out like that? This food so shit, even letters trying to escape. That's all I gotta do now. Get myself some chopsticks. All you gotta do now is go to Thailand and apologize. You know, even before the egg fried rice video with Uncle Roger, Jamie did have like the paella incident and the Jamaican incident as well and a few other incidences. And now I wonder after all this with Uncle Roger, if Jamie can walk down the street peacefully without someone, you know, hackling or accosting him and saying something about egg fried rice. Especially with YouTube, none of this should go to the point where you actually accost someone in public. In the end, it's food, yes. You may not have thought of it and it's disrespectful, but at the end of the day, it's food. Ugh. That the worst noodle pool ever. The use of that tofu. What the hell? The sauce is a bit of a game changer. Asian food, the game perfect already. No need game changer, Jamie. Don't change game, change yourself. Second, like you see, a dish that's healthy. He eat one Not bite, delicious, notice how he it's... only eat one bite, no second bite, he just pushing noodle around, even he know it's terrible. Super nutritious. Honestly speaking, if he wanted to make this vegetarian or vegan, why not just add some mushrooms to this? He can add some different sorts of mushrooms. Add some different variations of mushrooms with this, with some other sauces. Make this a different version of Pad Thai. And just leave it at that instead of making this weird dish. Look at this Pad Thai. Ugh. If you want to make vegan Pad Thai, it's simple. Just substitute with vegan fish sauce and dry shrimp. You can substitute with mushroom because they both give Pad Thai umami flavor. That is vegan Pad Thai, very simple. Mm, see, Uncle Roger agrees. Mushrooms would have been a game changer, not puree tofu. You're the first chef who make Uncle Roger fall down completely from chair. Uncle Roger extending invitation. Man to man, when Uncle Roger hit 10 million subscribers, I happy to fly to wherever you are. We make one Asian dish together, okay? Can be fried rice, can be ramen, can be pad thai, you choose. And if you agree to film together, Uncle Roger will even eat chili jam with you, okay? Uncle Roger, seriously, if Jamie agrees to this, I have to be there. I would love to be one of the judges, actually. If that's possible, it would be fantastic. I would love to do this. I honestly don't care where it is. Well, unless I have to get a visa, I need to know ahead of time. But please let us know. And actually, guys, if you could, let's make this happen, yeah? Whether it be a collaboration with Uncle Roger and Jamie, and I'm the judge, or at least I'm there participating somehow, or it's a collaboration with Jamie and myself, or even better, Uncle Roger and myself. We're already halfway through 2024, so there's still hope. In any case, hopefully you guys did enjoy this review of Jamie Oliver's Pad Thai. Can't say so much for the Pad Thai, but in any case, it is a science experiment, so we can agree on that. Be sure to hit the subscribe button down below if you haven't done so already, and be sure to give this video a like as the more likes this video gets, and well, the watch time as well helps, the more people will watch the video, and maybe YouTube will show it to more people. Until next time, take care, have a great week, check out this next video coming up here, and I will see you guys again soon. Until then, take care.